In this video, we introduced the concept of random variables. So in previous videos, we were calculating probabilities for events, and we can kind of rethink how we're going to do this by introducing a variable that can take on different values with certain probabilities. So this is a random variable. Um, so you can just think about a random variable as a variable with randomness, probabilities associated there, or if you have um, maybe more of a mappy mind, you can think about this as a function mapping an event to a number. So it might be mapping it to the natural numbers or the interval 0, 1. It's just mapping it to some number. All right, so we've got two types of random variables. We have discrete random variables and continuous random variables. So discrete means it takes on either finite or countably infinite many values. Um, so some examples of discrete random variables would be the number of Instagram followers that you might have. So you could have 0, 1, 2, 3, um, no upper limit. Um, so we could count those. It would take us forever to count the different number of possibilities, but we could count those. So we would have a countably um, infinite number of Instagram followers that we could have. Uh, similarly, another discrete random variable would be the number of typos on a website. So we could count those. There's no such thing as like nine-tenths of a typo. So we just have certain values that this random variable could take on. All right, so that's discrete. Now we can talk about continuous random variables. So um, here we have values in some interval or maybe a bunch of intervals. So we have uncountably infinite many possibilities here. So some um, intervals that you see pop up a lot would be going from 0 to positive infinity, or we might see um, any real number, so from negative infinity to positive infinity, or we might see something in the interval 0, 1. Um, these are all examples of values that a continuous random variable could take on. OK, so continuous random variables, um, a couple examples. The number of dumplings that you eat at dim sum. Um, so maybe initially, you would think, well, I could only eat like 0, 1, 2, 3, that many dumplings. But you could eat half a dumpling, or you could eat 3 quarters of a dumpling, or you could eat 4 fifths of a dumpling, or you could get, eat 99 out of 100 um, of the dumpling. There's no like amount of precision that you'd have to stop at. So um, you could eat anywhere between 0, including 0 number of dumplings, um, up to and not including infinity. Similarly, the speed of a car, we usually in like normal people world talk about the speed of a car in whole numbers, but of course that's just rounding, right? Um, so even though we may say the car is going 20 miles an hour, really it might be going 20.00729 blah, 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 blah um, miles per hour. So the speed of a car would be in this interval 0 to infinity. Okay. So why might we want to introduce these random variables? We had a perfectly fine setup by just calculating probabilities for events. Um, one reason that we might want to introduce these random variables is it can sometimes simplify the sample space. So for example, imagine we have a school teacher and uh, she's interested in the number of students with dogs. Uh, if she just went through and created a sample space, as in like, OK, here's the first student. They could have dog or no dog. Next student, dog or no dog. Next student, dog or no dog. Um, that would create this humongous sample space. We would have 2 to the n as the size of our sample space. So if n is a big number, then this would be a really huge sample space. So we could simplify it by defining a random variable. Maybe x is the number of students with one or more dogs then this would simplify our sample space because we would have maybe zero students with a dog, one student with a dog, two students with a dog, and so on. So now the sample space goes to just the um, size n plus 1, number of students plus 1. So if we want to think about this with a concrete number of students, say we just have four students to keep things simple. Um, if we wanted to create the sample space dog or no dog, dog or no dog, dog or no dog, then we'd have 2 to the 4 options that we'd need to write out, so our sample space would have size 2 to the 4. 
if we compare that to our sample space by using a random variable, we can write that out pretty easily. Um, we could have zero students with a dog, one student with a dog, all the way up to four students with a dog. So obviously, there's just five elements lifted, listed here. So we have size five for our sample space. So even when we have only four students, which isn't even a ton of students, that's not a huge number, I would much rather work with a sample space of size five than one of size two to the four. So it can make things a little bit easier.